here we are again. So, um, I mentioned in my last video, the, or in my last showcase, the um, cotton candy one, that I maybe had a different plan for I'm hang hungry. The thing is, um, I'm actually turning this into more of a study project, I guess, which it was in the beginning as well, but I'm broadening it up a bit. So it's um, initially it was just to like practice or research um, cute sounding electronic music but um, I've changed it up a bit because the thing is that I'm also um, someone to get into gamelan music and especially uh, which is important in this case core music or core VSTs. I recently got a few pretty nice ones nice sounding ones guess this is the first one um, the name of the album will be changed into hope and despair hope being the like cutesy electronic sounding part and despair being the um, like well core more epic or orchestral sounding part with more minor influences instead of like um, major upbeat rhythms major scales rather so um this first one the first track of the despair side is called Knives. Um, and the focus in this case, like in Cotton Candy, it was just a cute sounding piece in general. In um, Cupcakes, it was a Game Boy inspired piece. In this case, it's, um, well, I guess to try out the Slavic and Bulgarian core VSTs as well as the 8 Dio um, violin VST. Or Dagio. Eight Dio Dagio Violence. Um, the core VSTs are, as mentioned, <coughs> Road Up 1. And let's see where it is Slavic Women's Core. There it is. Uh, it also has a few more instruments, actually. Should probably show you. There you go. It has a full core, which is the one I'm currently using here. It has a full core FX. Um, samples which i'm using here um and yeah then uh, singular um singers like sopranos mezzos altos uh soloists one soloist i mean as you can see the range is rather limited um which is i guess natural for a uh, well realistic core realistic singers um but it's also a bit limiting um, well, yeah, but it makes sense. Uh, usual knocked off of a normal person is usually like one and a half, or the range of a normal person is usually usually one and a half octaves. But okay, um, both have syllable builders, or um, I guess uh, word builders. It's called syllable builder for the road up, and um, I guess in this case it's just a grid mode. See, let's start with the Bulgarian core. In this case, I just, to test out, I did like ko de ha. There you go. Oh, the range of the Bulgarian core is also a bit bigger than the Slavic women's core. In this case, um, let's see, e masva ste, I guess. There you go. Uh, both those also have like uh, different patterns. You can key switch in between. Um, well, this one doesn't really, it seems. That's okay. It has way more um, places, I guess. Oh, yeah, I can choose the syllables like this. Um, let's see, this is just a piano, so I can, like, get some improvisation going, like last time. Um, yeah, the Slavic FX one is pretty interesting, and it has mainly stumps and claps. Yeah. 
and that stuff. It's like if you like put a I don't know like delay on it and um, distort it a bit, it will sound like stuff from nightmares. Briefing sounds. Yeah, those three are just briefing sounds. And then I have a bass drum here to get that epic feeling going. Um, I have legato violence. Which you can key switch as well. And Violent Sustain and Tremolo, um, which is uh, polyphonic, uh, as opposed to the this one. I mainly picked it because of the tremolos actually, but I think the sustain will come quite in handy as well. The tremolo is really great. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I started a bit already um, to make it less, well, to make it more organized, I guess. Uh, so let's see. Um, I want to actually see if I will pull through with this idea. But yeah, I did. So um, here's the, the beginning is mainly the clapping and stomping rhythm. It's pretty slow, as you can see. Okay, and then it starts with the Slavic course and the Bulgarian course. Um, come in as well. Also have some modulation going on, which I did with my mod wheel. Uh, I guess the main chord progression of this piece will be like an A flat, C, D, A flat. into G C D A uh G C D G I have to admit that I was kind of inspired by um the one goes in the shelf beam. Uh I think the one that showcased this um I think it was the Rodope 2 BST um also made a showcase piece covering the Ghost in the Shelf beam. But yeah, I think this card in particular, particular is um, Ghost in the Shell theme sounding. I believe they also wanted to get a uh, Bulgarian core for the um, singing uh, part of the main theme. But um, they did settle on an, a Japanese core instead in the end. Okay, let's listen to this core part. Okay, that's mostly it. Um, the main melody line or main motive will probably be, be something like, like this. Kind of, well, reminiscent of Danganronpa now that I think about it. I think they used a similar theme for one of the major despair themes. This would be pretty much the scale I'm using. Um, the Tremorals will mainly play the main chord progression as well. Also have pretty big um, reverb on them. The preset uh, uses whole church. 
um, because I want to make this piece rather atmospheric and more um, pattern and chord dependent. So the chord mainly being this one, as I mentioned. The second chord, the G C D G chord, can be actually fit it quite nicely into the G major chord. Oh, it is a G um, four five chord. Those can pretty easily be um, positioned into the normal three five chord. So yeah, makes sense. Um, I'm thinking that because of that, could transition it into C minor at one point, since G major is the dominant, meaning the chord that naturally leads into C major or C minor. Okay, that's pretty much what I have so far. I'll guess I'll keep working on it for now. I'm feeling that I'll have to do a lot of cutting. Alright. Alright, that's the main melody, these. Got that done. Let's see if I can put a soft finish on these. gonna extend these a bit to have it uh, fade in like since the violins have a natural fade in it's good to um, extend them a bit at the beginning okay I think I don't want to use the sustain loop preset with this one Yeah, that's at least a rough, rough part of the um, main melody. Alright, so next one I wanna have a solo tremolo part. this one quantize as always and there we go I think I want to do some more of the sustain as well Let's see the terminal was on D let's make sure that things don't get messed up
There we go. Let's see if it makes sense to have um, sustained cards here. that they are of the same length. There we go. Okay, we gotta increase the volume of this one, of this melody line. And add some modulation to this part. I would like an um, to have it a crescendo. Perfect. Okay, let's just have it going for all the tremolos. I think I should add some um, some electronic noises as well at some point, like some ambiental noises. Um, actually, as a side fact, fun fact, um, the Hope and Despair theme was actually inspired by Danganronpa since I just finished watching the third um, anime, uh, Danganronpa 3, I guess. Um, and watch the recaps or the um, story um, summaries of all the other games that I didn't play. And the story summary in, in general to prepare myself for Danganronpa V3, the game. Um, so I guess this is kind of inspired by Danganronpa's feel. This whole, this whole piece. Already one minute long. All right. The soft finish isn't really that soft. This whole part is pretty aggressive. I think I'm gonna have to use the mod wheel. That's not ideal. I guess it would be a good opportunity to either bring in like a percussion solo or to continue on the theme.
like this pretty much. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have a part uh, where the main leads violin plays like a improvisation or a continuation of the theme while the core sings the chords. Okay. I think in this case we can just copy this. There we go. Guess in this case, I'll have to start with the A flat. Plan is forming and transitions into what's happening. Oh, right. This one's a pretty long, long boy. Okay, there we go. Love to tweak this um, arc, this modulation arc a bit. Yeah, it's a bit smoother if it just continues playing these notes instead of like um, triggering them again. Like the arc has to s like decline around here again, around the middle. Making this kind of the like main big point of this chord progression. Uh, this uh, this chord progression it is these two chords. Okay. Um, then it will transition into C minor. Okay. The thing is that I think by this point the theme has kind of gotten way too boring because it plays here. I guess repeat it here and then here again. I'll just call it progression. So I'm actually going to put this further back because now we can have a more, like for example, a more percussion heavy theme over here and then get back to the main chord progression because if it just repeats the chord progression over and over again, it might get a bit too repetitive. Like the point of this theme. Of this track is to be repetitive, but it doesn't have to be that bad, I guess. So let's see. Like I said, maybe something more percussive, maybe something with the Bulgarian core. I think I'm going to have a core solo as well. Yeah, probably with the Bulgarian Cordo to like get more used to that one. Maybe we have some deep bass drums. Gonna put an equalizer on it to emphasize the emphasize the low parts. Did 
There we go. No, it's habitable. Okay, there we go. It's more of a trembling sound now, like an earthquake, I guess. things up but um, nothing a bit of quantization can't fix There we go. This is how long it will. Uh, the rhythmic part will at least last. I guess now I have to look for some sound effects to add. I guess one of my favorite sources is Omnisphere for that. All right. So the thing is, um, I'm going to make most of the ambient sounds myself, or record them myself. But um, I'm going to use an Omnisphere patch for like the low bass background noise um going to use gray then sounds like this um so yeah let's record it Much it. It's everything we need. Yep, let's add some automation to it. I like what I did for the second part a bit more. Okay, there you go. So I guess you can see this more of a horror, like almost background track. Or a horror game or a, or a horror movie where something disturbing happens or a scene where I have to build up some um, tension. Especially with this chord progression and this lovely chord sound. Kind of sounds like Japanese horror movie, kind of. It might just be because it reminds me of Ghost in the Shell, though. Alright, so the plan is to have more ambient noise here, especially percussive ambient noise. And then 
more of a melody going during this part. Even got a melody going. So let's cut this up. If I see here. Okay, let's quantize this. So I believe the chord progression is C, C minor. A major. Let's see what was the melody? Major maybe B major. And so E major. Okay. Sense and then G minor. this kind of B major without the root uh, B major 7 9 which is kind of the main chord of the thing all the time so F minor. Then G major. Should be the dominant. And then this would be repeated just with chords. Um added. Like probably from the rest of the violence. Guess I could use a bass drum as well. Well, this part doesn't need them. to clean the violence up a bit later on. Quantize everything. So 
what would be missing. I guess a base. Go for cellos maybe. With the violence play, the main note. Rather have a cello play this part. It may be the core actually. And this will be the end. So, good thing about this is that, um, what well, again, this not being a piece for a video game or a movie, is that I can put in parts like these, which don't quite sound as well despair esque as the rest. But it makes the piece sound more melodic. Fix the stuff that I misplayed. It was especially here, it seems. Yeah. There we go. Later on, I'm gonna change this up and not let them only play A. In the case of um, Double Guardian Core, I'm gonna like maybe try to make actual phrases, maybe things that sound more like phrases. But okay, um, this will do for now. So I wanted to have a cello as well. One of my favorite cellos is the solo cello. So solo uh, Hollywood cello by East West. I'm gonna leave it at the up at the sample for now, I guess. I can probably lower the uh, volume of the solo cello around here. Don't think I like this part actually. Let's have it like this. I kind of want to fill this out, but I would need like different instrument for that, I think, because the sustain violence 
they kind of clash too much with the lead violence, lead violin instrument. So let's see if just full strings is gonna do it. That's pretty good. The clash kind of clashes with the full string. Like if I make them too high, they clash with the legato violence or violin. And if I make them too low, they clash with the cello. So let's do some equalizing. a bit better. Um, let's see what where we've come. It's actually almost done already. Um, I have to do quite a bit of fine tuning though and I need to record stuff for this part. But I'm gonna go on the recording session tomorrow anyway so I guess it will take care of it by itself. Kind of. So let's listen to the full track how it is for now.
there it is. As you can hear, it's pretty rough so far. I guess um, as opposed to the uh, to cupcakes. Um, uh, I didn't do it step by step this time, but actually just finish the whole outline and just have to well mostly do fine tuning and fill in stuff in between, especially here. But yeah, some playing techniques or playing um, violin playing sounds didn't sound quite as realistic uh, so far. Same for sustain. I have to fix that as well. But yeah. Guess this will be the plan for next time. Alright. So, I'm back. Alright, um, I actually did the changes off camera to kind of make this more organized, I guess. Well, since these are mostly just minor changes anyway. And it's probably not that interesting to watch anyway. So, um, let me actually show you what I've changed. So, um, first off, the core automation. It's actually evened out a bit more. Kind of didn't like that it dropped too far. I think it dropped to like around here. Built up again. So, just use the, um, the line tool to adjust it. Um, it drops down around here though. Like, there's a sudden break. Which is actually. can kind of make it more realistic, actually. Since the thing is. That at this point they usually have to take um, like a break to get some air, so um, it sounds like they do a quick break around here. There we go. Um, also, um, remove the A flat here that the Bulgarian core played. Um, instead of uh, putting it to a G, actually, to kind of make it fit this part, we actually open both at once. Here's where the A flat was, which clashed quite a bit with the um, original uh, core chord progression here. And also um, change the G to an A flat to kind of remove the um, dissonances since I felt that they clash too much. I mean, dissonances can be pretty good, especially in a piece like this, which is why, well, there's like this weird chord progression here, which is. which has a dissonance between these two notes already. Like, it's, that's a. like this, there's a tritone right here already. And between these two and the big second here. So, yeah, this is pretty much dissonance ridden. Um, but I guess I felt like it was too much when the Bulgarian core played the dissonance as well. Um, and instead of just uh, lowering the A flat to G, I actually just removed it altogether since I felt like it would sound better if there's like this G um, like fading in again. Just like an extra note that fades in here. Too. So, um, let's see, Delegatos. I think I have um, actually extended how far the um, G goes. It's not too short um, and has some time to actually fade out. Here you can hear it has that like arc and the like high point of the dark is around here. This was where uh, the length or where the note stopped before. But by extending it to over here, the arc actually declines. Also, um, Lord, the modulation, since it was. Way too loud, in my opinion. That's way better. Okay, actually, let me move these by a bit. Yep. 
and these as well. There we go. Okay. Um. See, I also I think I extended these by a bit as well. I think they were just um. Length was around here. I changed them to be around here. I guess I felt like it sounded too short. Actually, I might want to adjust the arc a bit later in this video. Okay, let's see. Other than that, um, I actually muted this ambience because uh, originally I said for once that I wanted to have like a core section, like the Bulgarian core, having a solo section kind of. And um, also a section with mostly ambient sounds. And that sounds more percussive, I guess. And more creepy. But the thing was uh, that I couldn't really cram both in here. So I decided to go for the Bulgarian core part. So I'm gonna get rid of the ambience here. That's why the channel is muted. And I'm gonna do more with the Bulgarian core. Since the main point of this track is to kind of explore the whole... Uh, these two cores. And partly the um, violence. Okay, let's see. This is just a same pattern as here is this as that one um also um increase the volume of the legato violence since especially around this part they were they were way too quiet because of the um core that comes in a bit later and the cello and the full strings Um, and for the full strings, I actually removed the bottom oct octave because I felt like it's made the mix a bit too muddy and it clashed with the cello and it clashed with the bass drums, of course, which are like the bassiest uh, part of this whole track. I think that was everything I changed. So let me adjust the arc here. It sounds a bit smoother, in my opinion. I forgot one thing, actually. Um, also, did some syllable stuff here. So, um, how the syllable changing actually works is that um, as long as a note is held, the syllable does, doesn't change. But as soon as um, there's a break, syllable changes. So um, in this case, these two notes are held all the time. So the syllables for this whole section will be um, the same. Same for this. Um, and here towards the end, for the more melodical part um, it usually changes in like um, two in a two bar rhythm so like these two notes are held so this whole section will be one um, syllable this note is held so this whole section will be a syllable same here and same here okay and the syllables are gonna be because of that since it will start over here a for this whole pattern, A for this whole pattern as well. Then over here it will be Ma, Ri, Ya, E. Kind of to make it more realistic, since I feel like the great point about this VC is that you actually have multiple syllables that you can choose from to make it sound more realistic. Like almost make it sound like it has lyrics. It's not as um, like extensive as the um, symphonic core or Hollywood core word builder, 
but it's still pretty cool in my opinion. And I mean, it's a um, like Russian or Slavic core anyway, so um, it's not like it has to like have English sounding lyrics. I guess in this case it's actually pretty cool since it could say Maria or Maria E, I guess. So let's reset this to E. There we go. There we go. Um, I guess, like I said, I'm gonna do the fine tuning of camera. Um, like, for example, I think there were some volume is issues here, or same for the bass drum. I think I'll have to lower that one. But the main thing we're gonna concentrate now is the part in between here. Actually, this is gonna be a Bulgarian core part. Let me actually reorganize this whole thing. So the Omnisphere part is the piano. It's gonna be all the way down here. Alright, there we go. Alright, I think I have something drafted up. So, um... Actually, it would be really interesting is to have like a... Tone that's like held. I guess like a droning sound. Actually, let me open piano roll so you, know, so you can actually see what I'm playing. Like the health G gives it quite a bit of atmosphere, in my opinion.
gonna have to fix the syllabus later, but let's worry about the melody first. And then maybe the same, like a quart or a fifth, fourth or fifth over the this melody. Let's see, a fourth makes the most sense. Maybe more like this actually. Like in parallel force all the time. Gives it kind of a dangerous air. This sounds pretty much like what I had in mind. mind. So let's record it now in one piece. There we go. It's a bit quiet because the modulation isn't quite right yet. So let's take care of the modulation first, actually. There we go. So that's what the modulation looks like. Actually, I also want to add a bit of vibrato with the pitch shift. I think I'm gonna vibrate it upwards. I think there was actually a mistake here. Like I played the, yeah, I played the a B flat instead of the A flat. There we go. A flat sounds more ominous in my opinion than the B flat part, or the same with uh, B flat instead of an A flat. Okay, let's add the vibrato. There we go. Okay. Guess with this the piece actually already almost done. Since I kind of fired part through the last session, 
this didn't take quite as long. So all that's left would be making adjustments. So I think for uh, cupcakes it took me like three days. Like um, randomly uh, strewn apart a week. Pretty much. So it was in two weeks, like three days and two weeks. I had to work on a few other commissions. But yeah, this time it was just two days. Okay. Or, well, by turn I ought to be three days, depending on how many changes I need to do. Alright, here we go. And this will be the last session where we finally finish this whole thing. Okay, so I made a few minor adjustments, actually. Um, they were smaller than I thought they would be, actually. Uh, I added a bigger fadeout here and reduce the overall modulation of this whole part um, to kind of make it quieter. Also lower the volume of the cores during this part so they don't overpower the violence too much. Sounds way better, better in my opinion. I also changed the G here to a C because I felt like the G for some reason clashed with the whole chord which is weird maybe the the G is sung like a few quarter steps lower or higher and clashes with the this whole C minor part for some reason but yeah it's, it was fixed after I um, changed the G to a C Okay, and that's that. Oh, I also um, removed the stomp uh, clap part here. Because they were too quiet anyway, and it sounded more like um, like random, random noise in the background that shouldn't be there. And other than that, only thing we have to do now is fix this Bulgarian core part um, at syllables before that and then just mastering which is gonna be a bit more this time fortunately as opposed to um, cupcakes which didn't have any mastering at all so let's see <clears throat> so after fiddling around quite a bit came to the conclusion that I don't like Rodope at least the first one I don't know the second one is probably better a lot better but um, well, it kind of has this fake uh, vocal syndrome, I guess you could say, where the notes just don't fade over uh, naturally. You can clearly hear a break there, even if I, like, do this, doesn't really help that much. Let's try making it quieter, maybe. Doesn't help that much. So yeah, instead I am going to use this Lavi core after all. I guess the Bulgarian core was more of a hit and miss, but I guess it can still be used for like other stuff. But yeah, probably. Um, suggest getting the getting rolled up too in that case if you want a Bulgarian core But yeah, I've moved this to the Slavic core meaning that I have to add additional phrases now Let's make a C sharp one pattern then Actually in this case I have to let's see this needs to become Maria A. There we go. Okay, and this one has to be just A and A. The rest will be deleted. 
Okay. So with this we have a for this part, a for this part. Because in this case we just need one a. This is on C1. So there we go. And there we go. And Maria A is on C sharp one. There we go. Okay. All that's left is to make one pattern for Slavic core. So this is gonna be one whole section. This is gonna be another one. Let's make one for these two. I think this is gonna be just the same. Let's see what would make the most sense. Like it doesn't sound totally natural either, but it's still way better than the than the Rodopt one BST. Let's see. Mm, not quite. I think we'll have to go with A because it's it thinks um, this part has quite a lot of notes that are gonna be sung again, I guess, or like where the E or this um, syllable has to be started off once again. I guess it's kind of unfortunate that it can't just be re here and then E from here on out. So we're gonna go with E or A. Let's actually get rid of the poly here. There we go. Make this be sung again. Okay, so then we have a four syllable pattern here. Let's see. Maria E, I guess, again. Perfect. Okay, I think we have to make a few adjustments to the length. the fade out around here though mm, it's a bit too strong
What works for this part since the Slavic core is a bit more aggressive than the Bulgarian core? That works. Um, I think that we can try actually is having three instances of the Slavic core, of them being solos, soloists. <clears throat> there you go, we have three soloists now. So, what we are gonna do is Let's make this the highest voice, I guess. This the middle voice. This the lowest voice. Bass voice. There we go. Listen to them. It's definitely more rural, I guess, like a, well, like a sw Slavic solo singer, like, um, more realistic maybe. We can add, like, stuff like this too. Um, there, that's what I mean. Like it has more options. Also an A with an upwards draft. Or uh, this kind of um, pattern. Which is pretty cool. That's pretty much it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so yeah, we can add stuff like that, which is which makes it more realistic in my opinion. Oh, that's gonna be an A.
Okay, there we go. Um, I guess I'm gonna do a similar thing here. I'm gonna not gonna do too much syllable stuff here. Um, I think I just need an yeah second pattern here. It's gonna be mostly a broad. Um, uh, yeah, a then a yeah around here for the Maria the same here okay test that anyways considering this part Okay, so all I have to do now is reset this whole thing. Okay, there we go. No, not quite. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I think I want to have some ornamentation here as well. Gonna make in a G1 pattern, I guess. I'll switch back to C1. So another thing I want to do is making them louder. So here we have a fader, PCA fader, used to increase their volume. All right, here we go. That should be about it. Um, gonna do some mastering and then gonna go back to make sure that everything sounds good. And I have to <laughs> remove these. Um, gonna save that for later, just in case. Okay, mastering, let's see. So what I like doing is um, just put in an, a, an equalizer in first, then compressor, <clears throat> then a limiter, and Celeste one, 
the dynamic range meter. So I know how loud it really is in the end. Okay. Rid of these. Um, and let's see. Let's do equalizing first. So what it did was lowering the low frequencies, kind of fight the bass drums a bit. Also lowered them by 2.5 decibels, since they were a bit too loud in my opinion. And I have increased the high frequencies to kind of bring, to kind of add a bit of shine to the violence and the core. Okay, next up is the compressor. Let's see, one of my favorite ones actually, Titan Classical Music. Um, gonna s I have to see if this works because it compresses it pretty hard. It also brings the instruments more to the foreground, which is personally my kind of sound. how the violin now really comes out. Okay, so I had to lower the bass on the Slavic um, core a bit during that part. I think it also sounds a bit cleaner during all the other parts as well. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And something is still clashing during the part where the Slavic core sets in again. So I guess I reduce it to just a C. There we go. Okay, I have to cross-reference to see if the loudness is actually good enough as it is. Okay, I'll listen to the other tracks real quick. Um, and yeah, it seems like the loudness is okay as it is now. <clears throat> With the plus 5 gain. Plus 6. Ah, no. The bass is a bit loud during this part. I don't wanna put it up too high. RMS is a bit 
a little bit small, though, I have to admit. guess all that's left would be to actually fix this, thing, this stuff up, <clears throat> since it sounds a bit unnatural still. Oh, that's cool, I can adjust the brightness as well, since some parts are a little bit too bright. So that's pretty good. Actually, it sounds cooler if it starts with the A part. There we go. Yeah, that's way better, in my opinion. So I think I actually have to do this the other way around. Doing it like this. There we go. here. Sound way better now. Just gonna do the same changes here. If there are any like that, yep, there are. Okay, there we go. Let's listen to it.
don't like this part too much. Just jump here. Okay, that sounds better. Uh, sometimes um, well, it happens that uh, some parts don't sound as good sung by a specific VST or played by a speci specific VST, like some notes or some patterns, then you have to adjust it just like that. So. So this was another part that didn't sound as good with this VST. Okay, I think that's mostly it. Maybe I'll make a few small adjustments before publishing it on Bandcamp. But if anything, it will be just really small stuff. So all in all, this is a track. Okay, let's listen to it.
there we go. That's three minutes and four point five seconds guess of sadness and despair. Okay. Um I feel like I should do these more often. I don't get to make uh, like totally despairy themes that often since it's not such a big theme in visual novels, at least not in those that I've composed for so far. Uh, for yeah. Like I think Ibizikawa had some Ibizikawa has some more uh violent themes sometimes. Kind of made sense. Uh, like I said, I'll probably make some adjustments, like I'll take a break off a few days or maybe a week. So uh, I can de re synthesize my ears for this piece. And then make a few adjustments. And by the time I'll probably have it have this video on YouTube as well. Like by the time I upload um, knives on Bandcamp. Alright, that's that. See ya.